Alright, so if the fact that we're looking at a wall button like this doesn't tell you anything, get ready to see something cool. So, you're probably wondering what we're looking at. Well, I told you about this a little while ago. Here's the door. It's a 16 by 7 North Central. And, well, if you're wondering what opener we have on it, it is this. This is a Stanley Premier Digital model 3100.09 from 1983 um let me see stanley premier digital uh let's see third horsepower uh the dip switches are right there under my finger see 1981 12 volts to the wall button um it's one of the yellow ones these are actually fairly rare um, it is missing the light cover, but at least there is the good part, which is the opener itself. Um, so basically, right here, the remote isn't working. And I'm pretty sure it's just a battery. Um, this is may maybe getting replaced in the near future anyway, which I honestly kind of hope it does, because this would be a pretty cool one to have. But the main reason why getting replaced, other than the remote not working, is that, if you can see, yeah, the rail's bent. So, I don't know how long that's going to last. But, oh well. And, um, you can see that this one has the limit knobs here on the bottom. The opening and closing. And then this is for the clutch. Um... I'm pretty sure this is the clutch adjustment. Uh, oh, by the way, that's a fairly long antenna. Anyway, the way that this clutch works pretty much, on the gear there's a plastic piece that, or there's a plastic piece that the spring pushes against the gear, and the tighter this is, the harder it's pushed against it. And there's bevels on the gear that the plastic piece twists off of. And then there's a switch on the board that it hits, which reverses the door. Now, the problem with that is that eventually the switch is attached, is soldered directly onto the board. So what would happen is eventually those solder points would become weak, the switch would break off. Well, then when the door hits something, it's not going to reverse. There's just going to be a lot of stress until the gear case cracks, and then all the lube comes out of there, and then you're pretty much done for on these, because you can't get parts for them anymore. But yeah, that was the main, as from what I know, that's what would typically go wrong with these openers. You can see that this does have a spring-loaded arm as well and that is the original trolley, original rail, original chain. Actually I'll show you where the uh, chain adjustment is. It is that bolt right there. So yeah like I said this remote doesn't work right now. Dip switches are matching, but I'm fairly certain it's just the battery. So, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a run and see how it sounds. It's actually very quiet, and now it got dark, so I don't know how well you can see. Actually, you can see the rail is bent, so, um, yeah, most likely going to end up getting replaced, or at least I'm going to recommend that it gets replaced, because I, I don't know how well that's going to hold up, so, we'll run this back up. Springs make a good amount of noise. get you a close up to the unit here let me just uh, hold on just give me a sec all right so we're back up close to it since the remote isn't working i'm gonna have to short across with the screwdriver to run it here we go
So, I mean, it's quiet. It runs, but I just, I don't know. I don't really trust that rail right now. You can see that, and I'm sure actually, you know what? I bet the reason the rail is bent is because the opener was mounted a good bit higher than the header bracket was. Yeah, I think that is the deal. We'll go back up with it. It says in the back there, remanufactured equipment as well, so I'm not sure if that means that this was rebuilt at one point or not. Yeah, and this one has a I believe that's a seven tooth sprocket. I'm not sure. So, yeah. You know what? I think I may actually just. Oh. I don't know. I think I may drop the cover on this quick and show you what's inside of it, assuming it's not that difficult. So, we'll be back in a little bit. Alright, so we're back with a different view of the Stanley. This is what the insides of it look like. Power wires coming up there. A huge capacitor. Uh, that's your board. It has the transformer and some relays. These are the limits. You can see where it just kind of travels like that and then hits that little uh, contact there. You can see how this works. This has a bevel on it. It comes off or it twists off the gear and pushes against that. This is the gear case. You can see it is already cracked. Which, hold on, let me shoot a picture of that quick. Yeah, so that gear case is cracked. And then here's the motor. It's uh, 1100 RPM. So, pretty cool. So I'm just going to run it once here uh, with the cover off. And then that's going to be it. Come on. Now not gonna run. Huh. I guess now it does not <laughs> say it feel like running. Well, let me try it just from the wall button here quick. The only thing I did was take the case off, so there we go. There's a pretty cool opener. We'll open it one last time and then that's going to be it. <laughs> Just doesn't want to work on the screwdriver now, does it? about it by the way this does have a metal worm gear and then plastic drive which you know that it's not always the best thing but this one seems to be holding up so that's about it for the Stanley thanks for watching